welcome back to the channel everyone and for those that are here for the first time welcome i'm dark hour 717 today we're going to be discussing another entry in our ship guide series we will go through and look at one of the more unique ships in star citizen one that has not a lot of dedicated gameplay but is quite popular as shown by the number of people rallying behind it for the 2952 ship showdown i am talking about the anvil terrapin before we get into the details though, if you enjoy these ship guides, hit that like and subscribe button, help me get the videos out to more people. I really appreciate it and thank you to all of those that have already subscribed. Also stick around till the end to find out how you can get entered in for our August giveaway of the Anvil Centurion with LTI and the Beachhead Paint. The Anvil Terrapin is one of the Versus Advanced Scouting and Exploration ships. The name Terrapin is defined as a small edible turtle with a lozenge shape marking on its shell. A freshwater turtle especially of smaller size. In no way though does this ship live up to that name in any way. The ship itself is no slouch by any means. Designed as a support and forward exploring ship, it is built to withstand many varying harsh environments. The Terrapin is available in-game and available at Astro Armada and it goes for 2,568,100 AUEC. As a pledge, it is available for 220 US dollars and is available at various times throughout the year and is part of many packs. Classified with a Pathfinder role and a job based as a support vehicle, it's a size two class ship. It's got a minimum crew of one and a maximum crew of two. Its inventory capacity is gonna be 0.65 SCU. It's got a 20 meter length with a width of 16.5 meters and a height of seven meters. Its max SEM speed is going to be 157 meters per second with an afterburner speed of 1,204 meters per second. It's got an immense hydrogen fuel capacity at 1,045,000 liters and it's got a modest quantum fuel capacity at 950 liters. This ship far exceeds its name. Being built around a sturdy frame with a tough and resilient hull, it is built to take the harshest of treatment. Able to take a punch and continue going due to its high hull HP. The Terrapin, although being boxy, and it's about as far from aerodynamic that you can be, handles amazingly well. This is in part due to its four main VTOL engines. The ship has the capability to rotate its main thrusters to assist in hovering, landing, and also small precise maneuvering while exploring. This ship really is purchased for purpose and not based on looks. The Terrapin is actually designed with advanced scanning in mind, which suits its role as an exploration or a Pathfinder ship well. Outfitted with a midship scanning station that resembles something more from a horror torture film when you first enter, this station will be the hub of the ship's work scanning for different things while it traverses known and unknown surfaces in empty space. Designed for a single person's use, you can actually run two crew on the Terrapin, so one may scan and one may navigate. The Terrapin is built for its purpose though, and not for comfort. Stock the components that are gonna come on the Terrapin are two size two civilian grade C 5A Tramali shield generators, one size two civilian grade C daybreak power plant, three size one military grade B polar coolers, and one size one civilian grade C EOS quantum drive. Now that's gonna give you a 20 million kilometer time of about four minutes and three seconds. Crusader to Hurston's gonna take you five minutes and 29 seconds. And R Corp to Microtech will take you eight minutes and 44 seconds. So stock, it does fairly well. Also, it has four main thrusters and 10 maneuvering thrusters and two retro thrusters. Now, as far as upgrades for the Terrapin, I only feel the real benefit you'll get is upgrading the Quantum Drive to an Atlas Quantum Drive, as you will get both greater distance as well as better fuel economy from this. Doing so, you will only make a small improvement on time though, less than 20 seconds on the longest trip of our corp to Microtech. The Terrapin is well designed for its role with the configuration of its stock components. It also more than manages in maneuverability and function. As stated, not built for comfort, the Terrapin is designed with an open floor plan interior with a single bunk for nap. It has a small weapons rack and a small facilities compartment for the crew's needs. A small walkway leads to the front pilot area where a front wraparound instrument and MFD station is situated. The windscreen is made up of four panels with a sliding armor plate over the pilot's head for protection. It has tight and reasonably responsive controls that make the ship easy to quickly learn and to handle. 
It is also very forgiving for pilots that have a more difficult time learning. With its higher durability, it can actually take a number of bumps along the ground or into another object without bursting like a Drake ship losing its duct tape. The speed of the Terrapin is much higher than needed for its role, but having that extra speed to escape a situation is always appreciated. As far as when you get into situations, the Terrapin is not made to fight its way out of a scuffle, it's made to run. The stock weapons on the Terrapin are minimal with just a pilot controlled dual size 2 CF-227 Badger laser repeater, and it is enough to defend yourself, but not for a prolonged fight with a more heavily armed component. Get into a fight with a prospector though, and you'll probably be fine. You can opt to upgrade these, though I don't recommend it as again, they are there just to buy you time to get out of the area. These along with the fortified hull should be enough to provide enough protection for you to get out of hostile areas. The Terrapin itself, though not the most sleek or impressive looking ship, is one of the most durable and interesting ships. Currently the main downfall is the lack of dedicated gameplay for the Terrapin. While this and many other ships still await the advanced scanning capabilities, the Terrapin's entire role is based on this one function, which currently places the Terrapin in the role of more of a transport, which it does extremely well as a secondary role, and this is one that we even use the Terrapin for within the org. As the features of advanced scanning do come in, I feel we will see an entirely new appreciation for the Terrapin itself. For of the ships that will feature this capability, it seems the Terrapin is the most well-designed and will likely be the most proficient at this task. For those wanting to be explorers within the verse, I would say this is a great vehicle to have as part of your fleet. And that about wraps it up for our look at the Anvil Terrapin. I hope you found the information useful and remember to get your entries in for the August giveaway of the Anvil Centurion with LTI and the Beachhead Paint. Just subscribe here and leave a comment on any video to automatically be entered. Also, you can get a second entry by heading over to Twitch and give a follow there. Winner will be drawn on September 1st. Also, you can catch the streams on Twitch every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you would like to help support the channel, please check out the merch store or hit that join button above for a membership as low as 99 cents per month or even give a super thanks. I greatly appreciate it and it all goes back to our giveaways back to the community. Thanks again for joining me and please be safe out there and we will catch you in the verse.